Well, hello there. New Milan Design here with another video from the series called Before and After, where I'll show you render settings for my project. Today we are working with this uh, Scandinavian uh, mountain cottage, and the shot we're looking for is a uh, winter day shot. So let's start by uh, creating our base render. copy of the same shot for our effects. We're going to use one of Lumion presets uh, called Overcast. Now we have majority of the of the effects selected already and I'm going to add a couple more. I will need real skies today and also precipitation. And uh, let's start uh, straight away with this one. I mentioned I'm going to do a uh, winter shot, so I need uh, to move the rain snow slider all the way towards the snow. As you can see, the landscape is changing straight away. It is all covered by snow. Now the precipitation phase. I would like the snow to create a couple of spots or patches on those hills behind, as you can see. And also in here on the path and around the bench, rocks and so on. So uh, I like it uh, in here. Now the particles quantity, uh, I want a little more, not too heavy uh, snow, and the particle size uh, a little down, so the particles are a little small, smaller, kind of like a fluffy, a nice um, snow, not too heavy. Block plant plants can stay where it is. That's the basically the bias of those objects in your uh, in your model. It will uh, will block the snow coming through and blocking distance can stay on zero. Now I'm going to bring down the extra fog addition all the way down. As you can see it disappeared from the background, from the sky, because I'm going to adjust the fog itself. But first I'm going to select uh, real skies and change it into something more uh, appropriate for winter uh, day. So I selected the overcast preset from, uh, from the real skies. I'll keep the heading as it is. As you can see, it is very, very cloudy. Uh, I'm going to bring the brightness uh, down a little bit, somewhere on here, just to get a little bit of uh, contrast on uh, on those clouds, and perhaps the brightness, perhaps the brightness up just a bit, so we get some uh, diffuse light from uh, the sky. Moving on to to the fog that I mentioned. Now I'm going to bring the fog density up just a little bit and I'm going to work with the fall off, fog fall off, it's the distance from, uh, from the ground that uh, the fog will be created and I'm going to bring the fog brightness up and also the brightness, the color in here, as you can see it's starting to appear, uh, bring the fog density perhaps a little closer towards the house and not too much so I can still I can see the interior uh, I want to see the uh, the edges of, uh, of those mountains behind so uh, work with the fall off one more time as you can see the the fog is basically uh, falling down but I want the contours of uh, of the mountain range behind to be to be slightly visible. Now it will look a little different. The the fog preset or the effect will look different in the viewer, as you can see in here, uh, from actual render. So we have to do a couple of test renders to find uh, the nice balance uh, for the shot. I think for now uh, I'm happy uh, with this one. I think that will work for us today. Sky and clouds automatically disabled since we are using real skies and I'm going to disable the sun as well. So we are using only the light coming from uh, the real skies, basically the diffuse uh, light from the skies. Moving on to next effect called sharpening, just to bring up the intensity a little bit, sharpen up the picture and that's it. Exposure always is last. Uh, next stop, color correction. Now uh, the scene is uh, mostly white from the snow and we know the snow produces a nice uh, white uh, light so I'm going to bring it down 
So the color temperature is going towards the blue spectrum. Uh, the tint can stay as it is. Uh, vibrance uh, during these uh, cloudy uh, days or uh, snowy days, obviously, uh, the light is very diffuse and the colors are very subdued. So there are no sharp colors. That's why the vibrance will stay where it is. Now we need, uh, obviously, brightness. So I'm gonna bring it up a little bit and the contrast goes down. The light will be diffuse from the sky and obviously bounced from all the white surfaces uh, in, uh, in our picture. So uh, there will be basically no contrast at all in uh, our scene. So we are done with the color correction here. And moving on uh, to the next effect called reflections. Uh, not too many uh, reflective surfaces in here. In fact, just uh, this one. And a big glass door on the back of the porch. Turning on the speed ray reflections and we are done in here. Moving on to hyperlight. Hyperlight is basically a uh, preset for mostly for, uh, for the interior. So I'm not going to touch that. You can keep it in the, in the value in the middle. But we're going to work with a skylight since we are uh, bouncing all the light from our sky and the surface around the model. I'm going to bring the brightness up obviously somewhere around here. So we have nice uh, light bouncing on this uh, back porch and the saturation down. We don't want any uh, strong uh, colors and turning on the uh, planar and projected reflections as well. We are done with the skylight. Next stop is uh, shadow effect. Uh, here we have uh, the coloring. The coloring will go towards the blue uh, spectrum, towards the cold shadows. Once again, all bounced from the white snow. Uh, the brightness goes uh, goes down because the shadows will be very very soft. Uh, interior exterior towards the exterior, only shadow goes down again. No contrast in the corners and uh, soft shadows and fine detail shadows on. Especially the soft shadows need to be on as we have all light that we'll have today is a diffuse light. So we are done with the shadows. Moving on to chromatic aberrations. I always like to bring the dispersion down just a little bit from the preset from Lumion. And uh, the last effect, or second to last, is the depth of field. Now, I would like the foreground to be out of focus, just slightly. And obviously, since the background is uh, basically in the fog, can be all out of focus as well. So I'm going to select the distance uh, somewhere around here. The back uh, portion of the house main portion of the porch, turning on the autofocus, that's the measuring distance from your selected point. I'm going to bring the amount of blur up, as you can see it is changing straight away. And the foreground background slider will be towards the background. So uh, I still want to keep my foreground slightly out of focus, as you can see, since we are moving uh, towards the background, it is getting sharper, so we don't want to go all the way up somewhere around here slightly out of focus this portion all uh, in focus nice and sharp and the background uh, when we render the, the fog will uh, slightly disappear and you'll see the background will be out of focus as well now coming back to uh, to last effect exposure I think we're just gonna move it uh, slightly up somewhere around here so we get some uh, detail on this uh, porch as well, but not to overdo it, not to have the, the picture too uh, overexposed because there is a lot of white surfaces, snow everywhere and fog, so the light will be bouncing uh, a lot from these surfaces. So I think we are about done with the effects and we can proceed towards uh, our final render. And as usual guys, thanks for watching, stay well and stay creative.